we have a mutual friend who showed me name was so smart and a good humane person um, who who's very way up into the subject and participates in the subject. And he said to me, well, one of the promises of AI is that it will allow people to have virtual friends or mates that it will fill, you know, it will solve the loneliness problem that is clearly a massive problem in the United States. And I felt like, I don't want to say it because I like him so much, but that seemed really bad to me. Yeah, I'm not I, interested in those. You know, uh, <laughs> I, mean, you, we, I think we, should, we have the same intuition about, about you know, what's, what's dark and dystopian versus what's well, like and cool, He's but, a wonderful person, but I, may, I just don't think he's thought about it or I don't know what, but we disagree. But well, I just, I don't even disagree. I don't have an argument, just an instinct, but like people should be having sex with people, not yeah, machines, right? That's right, that's right. Um, like I, I would go so far as to say some of these applications are like a little unethical, like the you know preying on sort of lonely lonely men with no yes. uh, with no with no opportunities for for a mate and uh, like you know it, it will make it so that they were actually not motivated to go out and yes. and, and date and get yes. an actual girlfriend like and, porn ten x yes yes and bad. I think that's really bad that's really bad for society. Uh, and so I think the application, look, you can apply apply this technology in a positive way or you can apply it in a negative way. You know, I, I would love for this, you know, doom cult, if instead they were like trying to, you know, make it so that AI is applied in a positive way. If we had a cult that was like, oh, we're going to lobby, we're going to uh, sort of go out and, uh, you know, uh, make it make it so that um, you know, AI is, is a positive technology. I would be all for that. And by the way, there are in history, there are, you know, times where the culture self-corrects, right? I think there's some self-correction on porn that's happening right now. Um, you know, uh, fast food, right? I mean, if, uh, you know, just generally junk. You're right. Uh, you know, everyone is like, Whole Foods is like high status now. Like you, you, you eat Whole Foods, there's a place called Whole Foods you can go to. Oh, that's right. And people are interested in eating healthy. And Chemicals it, in the air and water. Another thing that was a very esoteric concern even 10 years ago was only right. the wackos, it was Bobby Kennedy cared about that. No one else did. Right. And now that's like a feature of normal conversation. Yes, everyone's worried about uh, microplastics and the totally. testicles. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Which is, I think, a legitimate concern. Absolutely. So what, I'm not, I'm not surprised that there are cults in Silicon Valley. I don't think you named the only one. I think there are others. That's my sense. And I'm not surprised because, of course, every person is born with the intuitive knowledge that there's a power beyond himself. That's why every single civilization has worshipped something. And if you don't acknowledge that, you just, it doesn't change. You just worship something even dumber. Yeah. But so my question to you as someone who lives and works there is what percentage of the people who are making the decisions in Silicon Valley will say out loud, you know, not I'm a Christian Jew or Muslim, mm -hmm. but that like, I'm, I'm not, you know, there is a power bigger than me in the universe. Do, do people think that? Do they acknowledge that? Yeah, you know, for the most part, no. Um, I thought. Yeah, like I think most, I don't, I don't want to say most people, but like, you know, the vast majority of the discussions tend to be like more intellectual. I think people just take for granted that everyone has like a secular, mostly secular point of view. Well, I think that, you know, the, the truly brilliant conclusion is that we don't know a lot and we don't have a ton of power. Hey, that's my view. Something, <laughs> right, right. So like the actual intellectual will over time, if he's honest, will reach. But this point. is the view of like many scientists and many people who really went deep. I mean, I, I don't know who said it. I'm trying to remember. But someone said like the first gulp of science make you an atheist, but at the bottom of the cup, uh, you, you'll find God waiting for you. That's, Matthias Desmet wrote a book about this, supposedly about COVID. It was not about COVID. I just cannot recommend it uh, more strongly. But he, the book is about the point you just made, which is the deeper you go into science the more you see some sort of order reflected that is not random at all. Yes. And a beauty exhibited in um, in math even. Uh, and the less you know, and the more you're certain that this is by, that there's a design here mm -hmm. and that's not human or quote natural, it's supernatural. Mm -hmm. That That's his conclusion and I affirm it. But do, how many people do you know in your science world who think that? Uh, yeah, I can count them on on one hand, basically. How yeah. interesting! Yeah, that concerns me because I feel like without that knowledge, hubris is inevitable. Yeah, and and you know a lot of these conclusions are from hubris, like the the fact that 
you know, there's so many people that believe that AI is an imminent existential threat. A lot of people believe that we're going to die. We're all going to die in the next five years. It comes from that hubris. How interesting. I've never, until I met you, I've never thought of that, that actually that is itself an expression of hubris. Mm -hmm. I never thought of that. Huh. Yeah, you can go negative with hubris. You can go positive and, and just like, <laughs> we're gonna. And I think the positive thing is is good. Like I think uh, Elon is an embodiment of that. As like just a self belief that you can like fly, fly rockets and build electric cars is good. And may, maybe in some cases it's delusional, but like net net will kind of put you in a on a on a good path for for creation. I think it can go pathological if you. Um, if you, if, you know, if you're, for example, SBF, and again, he's he's kind of part of those groups, um, just sort of believed that he can do anything in service of his ethics, uh, including steal and cheat and all of that. Yeah, I don't, I never really understood, well, of course, I understood too well, I think, but the, the obvious observable fact that effective altruism led people to become shittier toward each other, not yeah. better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's such an irony, but I, th I feel like it's in the name. If you call yourself such grandiose thing, you're typically yeah. horrible. Like, <laughs> the, the Islamic state is not, neither Islamic or state. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's totally the true. effective altruists are neither altruists. The United or, Nations or is not united. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, boy, is that wise. So I don't think, to your earlier point, that any large language model or machine could ever arrive at what you just said. Mm -hmm. the Because like the deepest level of truth is wrapped in irony always. Right. And I don't, machines don't get irony, right? No, not yet. Could they? Um, maybe. I, I mean, I, I don't think, I don't take as strong of a stance as, as you are at like the, you know, the capabilities of the machines. I do believe that, you know, if you represent it, well, I don't know. I mean, I'm yeah. asking. I really don't know what they're capable of. Well, I, I think maybe they can't come up with really novel irony that is like really insightful for us. But if you put a lot of irony in the data, they'll understand. Right. They can ape human irony. They can ape. I mean, they're ape machines. They're imitation machines. They're literally imitating, like, you know, the, the way L, large language models are trained is that you give them a corpus of text and they hide different words and they try to guess them. And then they adjust the weights of those neural networks. Yes. And then eventually they get really good at guess, guessing what humans would say. Well then, okay, yeah. so you're just kind of making the point unavoidable. Like if if the machines, as you have said, it makes sense, are the sum total of what's put into them. Yeah. Then, and that would include the personalities and biases of the people yes. putting the data in. That's right. Then you want like the best people, the, the morally best people, which is to say the most humble people. Mm-hmm to be doing that. But yes. it sounds like we have the least humble people doing that. Yeah, I, I think some of them are humble. Like I wouldn't, like I, I think some people working in AI are really upstanding and, and good and want to do the right right thing. But the, 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 there are a lot of people with the, with the wrong motivations uh, coming at it from fear and, and things like that. And look, this is the other point I will make is that, um, you know, free markets are, are good because you're going to get all sorts of entrepreneurs with different motivations. Uh, and, and, and I think what's, what um, what determines the the winner is not always the ethics or whatever, but it's the larger culture. Like what what is the what kind of product is pulling out of you? If they're pulling the porn and the uh, you know companion chat bots, whatever, versus they're pulling the education and the healthcare and I think all the positive things that will make uh, our life better. I, I think that's really on the on the larger culture. I don't think we can regulate that with government or whatever. But if the culture creates demand for things just makes us worse as humans, it, then there are entrepreneurs that will spring up of and course. serve this. No, that's totally right. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. We hope you'll subscribe to it. And by the way, you can hit the little bell on there and get notifications every time we produce a video. We hope you'll do that also.